Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? It's Derek Hayden, and I am your only host today for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. My co-host is absent. He is actually on Lake Shelbyville, Garrett Ulmer. He is enjoying the lake with his family, so I'll be taking the reins today. So before we get started, let's introduce our, our uh, sponsor. Our sponsor, Zamboo's Delicious Grapefruit or Wildberry Vodka-Based Spirit infused with a Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at ZambooLiquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois, today we've got a special guest. He is a LinkedIn specialist and a one-man LinkedIn army. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome Daniel Alfon. How are you doing, Daniel? Hey, Derek. Thank you very much for having me on the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. We're happy to have you, and we're excited to learn a little bit about LinkedIn. And selfishly, um, I'm excited because LinkedIn is a big is a big tool that I use for business purposes, and I'm hoping that maybe I can get a few tips and tactics from you today as well. But Before we get into that, Daniel, I'm going to run you through our speed round and ask you a list of questions just to get to know you better and let our audience get to know you a little better. Are you ready, Daniel? Yes, sir. All right, Daniel. What was your first concert that you attended? Mike Oldfield. Mike Oldfield. That is a first. What (laughs) What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Coffee, hands down. Coffee. That's the first as well, but I would agree with you. It's pretty good. What are you an iPhone or an Android user? I'm an Android. I'm a free man. <laughs> free man. You know, we've had a few Android users on the, on the show and they all say the same thing. They, they feel like they have a little more freedom with an Android. <laughs> That's all good. Okay. And last question here. What is your favorite social media platform? I'm going to say Quora. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I've never used the, that. Yeah, tell uh, us about it. It's basically a Q&A uh, website. There have been a lot from answers.com to Yahoo Answers, but it's, uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't been uh, ruined yet. Okay. One of the best kept secret in, secrets in town and where I go when I need to learn something um, it's a great, a great way to learn fast from industry leaders in all sorts of tech, entrepreneurship, or anything you can imagine. Very nice. Well, thanks for that, because I had not heard of it yet, and I'm going to have to check that out. So, very good. Well, thank you, Daniel. Next up, I think I'd like to go ahead and just get, it, for me and the listeners, just learn a little bit more, more about you, Daniel, and your background, and how you became a LinkedIn specialist and developed your business today. So you feel free, short, short uh, story, long story, you up to you, feel free to share. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Um, I signed up early in 2004 and short answer is, is two years later, uh, LinkedIn enabled me to cut my sales cycle by 30% and I became interested. And I made a ton of mistakes early on and I'm fortunate to have learned fast and, and help other people uh, use it better and leverage it better. LinkedIn is huge, close to 1 billion members, and every second, two people sign up. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. So you started, you were an early adopter. I don't even know when LinkedIn started. It could have been much before 2004. Um, do you know? It was late 2003, a soft launch with four people, basically Reid Hoffman and three others. And um, there was a a time I could tell you how many, uh, um, the number you had on the URL could uh, tell you what uh, what, uh, number uh, you were. It still were, it was the concept of social wasn't even a thing then. I was curious to, to try it. I would never imagine it would become the the thing it is now. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, you know, in 2004, I'm trying to think of, I was still on MySpace, I think as well. (laughs) 
<laughs> and the, uh, you had yeah. one earlier guest uh, when when you asked about the social media platform. He said uh -huh. the, uh, MySpace, and and it took us a couple of seconds to to start laughing and understanding what we heard. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's funny because you look back and and how how basic that was but how cool everybody thought it was and then facebook and then everything else and you know i i hadn't heard of linkedin for several years you know i guess that was more when i got to the later years of college which would have been 20 2009 2010 when i really started hearing about linkedin so just to think that you were that early of an adopter tells me that it sounds like you've got some pretty good background and experience to share um so how, when did you start actually your business uh, helping others with LinkedIn? I think the first time was probably 2007, 2008. I was giving networking lectures. And at one point, in the net, at the end of the networking lectures, I used to speak about LinkedIn initially for five minutes. And then it, become, it became more 50%. And at one point, I split and I had a whole LinkedIn session. It was really about the basics. and. I have one client, uh, Lee Ectarison, an outplacement, the world's best uh, outplacement firm. And I've run LinkedIn workshops for that company for probably over 13 years. Wow, that's incredible. So as part of your business, Daniel, you do, do you, you work with groups? Do you also work one-on-one -on -one with individuals? Yes, executives usually when they need to pivot or find new clients or sometimes something else. Okay, excellent. So before we started here, Daniel, you, you shared some uh, some graphics with me. Um, I'm sure this is kind of what you use in, in some of your lectures or some of your um, you know virtual meetings with, with clients and prospective clients. Um, one thing that I'd really like to talk about today to help our audience, most of our audience is entrepreneurial business leaders, business owners. Um, some of them might be business to business. Some might be business to individual or business to consumer. Um, how can, I guess, to start from the top, how can someone set up their LinkedIn profile to optimize it to its maximum potential? Excellent. That's a great, great question. And I'd like to suggest to the Central Illinois Business Leaders uh, podcast, a very simple three question uh, um, system that would make you build your profile in a way that would convert your ideal reader. And the first question is really, who's your ideal reader on LinkedIn? If you're, if you're managing a company, if you're an entrepreneur, a VP sales, then your, your next prospect is probably the ideal reader you'd like to have on, on LinkedIn. You could be a manufacturer in Springfield. You could be any, you could be an insurance uh, broker. You could be any, anyone in business, but you need to niche down and, and forget about the whole world for a second and try to understand if you could pick one niche, then what would be, what would that niche be? That's question number one. It's not related to LinkedIn at all. The second question is, let's imagine we could make those people uh, miraculously visit your LinkedIn profile. Derek, what action would you like them to perform after they visit your profile? I'd like for them to and, reach out to me. Yeah. Excellent. Could you bring up your profile, sir? Bring up my own profile. Yes. I'm, bit, I'm getting put on the spot here, Central Illinois, but I like it. I like it. I'll share it with everybody, too. If I can find, there we go. Okay. Excellent. So the thing uh, to remember is that when you look at someone's profile, the first elements we see are the visual element, the banner. The banner here and the banner you uploaded already makes you stand out from 99% of users who haven't uploaded a banner. Awesome. And if you... Um, improve your profile by adding a banner that speaks to your ideal reader, those people are likely to stay and say, let's remember the, the ways people will visit your profile. The harsh, the, the most difficult way is when people run a search and you, Derek, are one of 555 uh, search results. So whenever I click and I, I check you out, there's a, a, a watch or a clock ticking 
king and say, you don't need to spend more than two seconds because you're missing out on 400 people. So right here, what I see is something interesting visually and I see the insurance and risk management and benefits. Mm -hmm. So this should be the core of your message. That should, if, if I'm interested in any of those, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, let me check that person out. And then I see the headline just below the, your, your name. I see winner of the Protégé reality show. So it, it's got me intrigued. I managed to see risk and benefits architect because it's nicely separated. And I also see podcast host. So I see three different elements that make me more intrigued. I cannot decide by, by that time whether I want to reach out to Derek or not. But I am, uh, uh, I find this appealing enough to say, let me check and see what's, what, what, what you're capable of and what you're up to. And what I would do usually is either click on contact info or scroll down. Let's try to scroll down. Okay. The experience section maybe, a bit more. And there's the about section, now the experience. So I see the certified risk uh, architect, and I also see the Derek uh, CRA uh, um, visual element where, where LinkedIn calls a rich media. That also makes your profile even more visually attractive. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. If you had a, a, a golden link, like the best destination you'd like people to visit after they check you out, uh -huh. what link would that be? Probably our website. Would you mind opening your website here in another tab and I'll suggest something? Yes, in a different tab. Yes. Great. I would like you to copy the link here and head back to LinkedIn. Okay. Within 30 seconds, what I'd like you to do is click on add profile section on the top right. Here? Here. Oh, here. Okay. Excellent. If you could click, please, on recommended. And featured first. And Derek, I'd like you to click on the plus sign on the right. So, uh, okay. Select link. And please paste the URL here and then click add. We'll wait a couple of seconds to see if LinkedIn manages to find an image or not. Wow, okay, so this is what we see and what you could also do instead of using that headline, you could also tweak that headline, okay? You can actually okay. write the, the link itself so I understand what it is. I think it's a good headline, but you okay. can also tweak that. And the description itself, if you had, a bit more information to give? Is there a sentence you'd like people to see? What would make them convert? What would make them say, I need to check that out? We'll see. Well, Sorry, I'm asking you tough questions, but you're performing That's okay. very <laughs> We'll say that. We'll start there. How does that sound? Awesome. Can you click on save? Yes. And I would like you to click on the arrow uh, to the left of featured so we visit your profile from the top down okay and what what happens now if you move if you scroll up then you'll see one oh. beautiful wow okay so that's probably 40 seconds i mean it may it might have taken you a lot of time to build the website itself but to sure. add it here is something that any listener can do and i'll i'd like to rem to remind us of the questions number one who's your ideal reader and number two, if you could pick one action you'd like them to perform, what action would that be? And if you want them to visit a website, then this is the simplest and strongest way to attract people to, to that website. And if we're getting a bit granular, content that works best on LinkedIn tends to be top of funnel. So it wouldn't be closing a sale. It, it, it wouldn't be a committing to a long-term million dollar thing. It would be let me see what exactly you offer. It could be uh, reaching out to you or having a strategy call or downloading some, some gated content or reaching out to you and, and having an inquiry saying, perhaps you could help our business. And if we, nice. the last question that needs to be asked is, if you know who's your ideal reader and if you know what action you'd like them to perform, then Derek, are we making it as easy and frictionless as possible by showing them the right information in the right order that is likely to make them convert. 
And if you're in business, then instead of thinking a, 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 about your LinkedIn profile as a CV, you need to think of it really as a website that needs to convert your ideal reader. And conversion usually happens best on your website. The conversion doesn't happen on LinkedIn and you have to make people go to your website where you have more information, a lot more control, and probably some system that will nurture them. Perhaps they're not ready to buy today, but it will be in three months time or six months time. Very nice. Yeah. So if, if you all out there, if you are a, a listener of the podcast, I would say this is a chance. The, I think the instructions that Daniel just gave to add this link to my page are easily done if you're even just listening to the podcast. But if you want to watch the, the video, of course, I'll share the video link on the podcast notes, but it was very easy for me to create that featured link. And I can imagine, Daniel, if so, if I'm doing kind of a focused uh, content campaign for a certain service or product for, let's say, a few months, I can change that featured link or add another featured link that takes them to a different website or different funnel to create that customer experience to move them down the funnel um, just to keep up with what you're actually trying to, what product you're pushing or service you're pushing at that certain you know, particular time. Derek, you're absolutely right. And your, your profile needs to speak about your future prospect or your future uh, uh, emphasis. If you're pivoting to a certain service or to a certain segment, then you know I, I know of no other system that would enable you to do that within literally a minute. Because if you think in terms of SEO, it will take you some time before changing the structure of the website. And here, when you, your website is live, when the destination you want people to go to is live, it really takes a couple of seconds and you can add it and enjoy your Zambu. Yes. Very nice. I like that. Well, that's awesome. Well, that, that was the tip I was looking for, Daniel. So you, you uh, satisfied my, my uh, need for getting some information from you. So that's awesome. Had no idea I could even do that to be honest with you. So that's, that's very helpful. So is there anything else, Daniel, as you look through a profile Anything else that someone can use to optimize their profile to move their potential client or their ideal client down the funnel to either, you know, make them a client or to just to learn more about me as the, the owner of the page? Okay, so um, if you could please bring up the funnel image that we discussed, yeah. uh, I'd like to describe something while, while you do it. There is a distinction between the page and the profile. It's important mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. The, the individual, your individual profile is way, way more important than the page unless your firm employs thousands of employees. Okay? Because okay. you probably follow very few companies and you have hundreds or thousands of connections. And that's the usual ratio. So forget about the page and focus on your individual profile. Because when I look at the Central Illinois uh, Business Leaders page on LinkedIn, then you have hundreds of followers. Mm -hmm. But the truth mm -hmm. is that you have thousands of uh, uh, followers. And if we add other, your co-host, then you have way, way, way more followers than the page will ever have. Okay, mm -hmm. so the page is not important. Let's start with your own profile. How would people discover your profile? That is um, one way to, to deal with it is to think about the terms that your ideal reader is likely to run in a search. There are billions of searches where, that are run on LinkedIn every year. So perhaps you could walk us, walk us through the ideal reader we have in mind, and let's brainstorm maybe three or four terms you think they would use. So for my ideal reader, yes, it sir. would be my ideal person that I would like to attract is a CEO, CFO, or HR manager of a business that's in the Illinois, typically state of Illinois, maybe Midwest, that is in a business of 50 or more employees. Okay, good. And if you could um, niche down and, and say within Illinois or the Midwest, there are num a number of companies that answer those criteria, what sort of industry or other than the uh, geography? Mm -hmm. So two of the industries that we seem to be work best with are 
auto dealerships or auto related industries and mm-hmm. nonprofits. Okay. Uh, if you think about the terms they're likely to use, is there a trigger event that make them understand they need to reach out to someone in real life? Is there a trigger event? Um, it could be, usually it's because of their employee benefits plan is mm. the cost is going up. So, you know, the cost of healthcare or um, okay. networks change or something happens where they are looking for an alternate solution to their employee health plan. Excellent. So let's suggest two quick ways. One is to uh, build a list of 30 to 50 keywords that those prospects, the CEO, the, the VPHR, or the uh, um, CFO are likely to use mm-hmm. and to weave mm-hmm. those into your individual profile. Okay. okay. Some of that okay. is probably um, um, in your website. So instead of sending, in, in order to people to find you easier and, and not be in page 55, then simply copy the text from your website that is natural for the human reader, but also includes the right keywords. And you can add that in the experience section. That's the fastest way to do it. You know, uh, again, a 30 second effort, you paste three sentences with a, a bunch of a dozen keywords, and that will make that will push you closer to page number one. The second element that takes a bit more time, but could be also uh, an option, is to ask yourself, Derek, what sort of questions are my ideal prospects struggling with? And if you say that sometimes it could be a change of network or the cost of of their employee uh, uh, going up, then try to write and produce high quality, educational, evergreen content that is not sales. How can you reduce the cost of your employee X, Y, Z? What to do when that happens? And if you give them a genuine and objective uh, description of the problem and they understand you know what you're talking about and you guide them through a baby step A, then they're ready when you say, I can also help you move to baby step B, they are likelier to do something like going to your website or requesting to have a, a, a call with you or something like that. So find the questions they're struggling with and have you as one of the options to those questions. And if you manage to write high quality, evergreen educational content, there are pro and cons to all sorts of systems and you're, you're, the, you're the ideal solution. After you've explained everything else, that would be top of funnel here. What happened when I did look at your profile, I saw the banner and the headline. So these are the most important element. The banner is the visual element that we see with the risk management and and the three terms there. Mm -hmm. And the headline is the most important real estate in terms of text. Because when we run a search, the only meaningful information we have is the headline. Now, by default, our headline is not always interesting for the reader because our... our, uh, Headline may be um, uh, CRA, Dancing Insurance Risk Advisors. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not always the best way to help educate those readers. But what you could do is um, have a slogan that says, I help X improve Y. Like you would say if we were sitting in a meetup or in a conference, then you would say something along those lines. And that Mm -hmm. is a lot more attractive unless the name of your company is a household name that opens the door. So so, some of our listeners uh, will say, hey, everybody knows Caterpillar, that's fine. But if the name of the company is not that well known, then instead of using it and wasting your real estate with that, with educating people about the name of the company, educate them about the benefit, and then they will understand that the name of the company is dancing, whatever it is, and then they're likely to reach out to you or do something else. So we're halfway through the funnel. And now I've got your, my attention and I want to know whether you could be an interesting uh, solution for me. Some of your ideal prospects will see that they share a mutual connection with you, one or several. This brings another question with your connection strategy. If you manage to connect with people you know well, and say, I see that we, you and I share a, a mutual connection, let's call her Jane Doe, 
and I reach out to Jane and I ask her about Derek, something that I can't understand from what you're saying. If she says, Derek who? We're in trouble. <laughs> if she says, you got to speak to Derek because he has helped me when our costs went up 20%, then I'm almost pre-sold. I become a warm leader. When I reach out to you, I got a lot more attention. I'm, I'm warmer and I'm, I'm less price sensitive than what I would have been without speaking with her. So it, go, it boils, down, boils down to our decision about our connection strategy. And if referrals are important in your business, then I would advise people to stick to people they know well, because those are the ones that are helping us move in the funnel from the middle of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. And here we basically say, okay, I want to reach out to you. And is it easy for me to reach out to you? So if I go to your website, will I find an easy way to uh, schedule a call or to message you? And another thing we need to remember is that when you click on contact info on top, most LinkedIn users imagine that their, their email is visible. But the truth is that your email by default is only seen by 1,666 people as we record this. Only your connections can see this. Okay. Would you allow me to, show my, to share my screen for a sec? Yes, absolutely. I know we're working without a safety net, but Central Illinois rocks and maybe we can do that. What, I, what I'm going to do is visit your profile. Okay. And I'm sold, okay, I, I've seen this, I understand, now I want to reach out to you. So I click on contact info and I see no email. Although you, Derek, had an email there. Uh-huh, so right. Think about right. the funnel, if we want to make it even simpler for people to reach out to us, there's a way, simple way if you'd like to, to show your email to non-connections, mm -hmm. then do share your screen again and, and okay. let's people through the way to do it. Let's see. Okay. Awesome. Can you click on the, on, in the top navigation bar, there's a small thumbnail of your photo on the top right. I'd like you to click on that image. Yeah. No, maybe the zoom, uh, um, it's, it's here. Here. Oh, here? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. If you can click, please, on settings and privacy. Okay. And I'd like you to click on visibility on the left. And on if you can select the third one, who can see or download your email address, guess what? What happens if you click here on change or the, that says only first degree co connections. Oh, okay. So you can tweak it. And like you said earlier, you can change it instantly. So now you can say, if someone has a mutual connection with me, then that's enough. Or if you're really open, you can also say anyone on LinkedIn. And the good thing about it is that if at one point you decide it's no longer worth it for you, you simply come here and revert to whatever it is you want it. Mm -hmm. That'll make you a bit more accessible. I, I want Excellent. you to make often clear. It will take some time for people who visit your profile until they de decide they want to reach out to you. Right. Maybe some of them, it will take some uh, prospect uh, could take the, the whole process could take five minutes. Others would take a lot more time. But if mm -hmm. you want to improve the bottom of the funnel, then this is one way to help people who want to reach out to you have a simple free way to message you outside of LinkedIn. Because most LinkedIn users, if they have a message option next to your name and they click on it, mm -hmm. they're asked to pay LinkedIn. Right. No offense. They will pay to speak with Derek Hayden, but for most of our listeners, <laughs> I'm not sure that's the case. <laughs> You're correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, I had no idea. So uh, was there anything else you wanted to go through on that? No, I think I don't want to overwhelm people too much. Really, in, in, in a nutshell, think of your profile as a website that needs to convert your ideal reader. If your yeah. ideal reader is a CFO in, in Central Illinois you want to, and you want them to reach out to you, read your profile and see that you're making it as easy 
as possible for them to decide that you, Derek, are part of the solution, either by providing high quality content or by making your profile interesting for them to say, I need to speak with you because you seem to know a lot about my pr problems. Yes. Very nice. One thing as, I, as we're kind of going through here that I've always wanted to ask, and I recently converted my profile to be on creator mode. What is the difference and what are the um, perks, I guess you would say, of switching your profile to creator mode? Excellent. I think creator mode is a good solution for many people. Um, okay. Prior to creator mode, let, let's say the simple reality was that you had only one option. You had a number of connections. So you had 1,700 connections. And those people, by default, uh, were also called your followers. But there was no easy way for people to follow you outside of, of, of that uh, system. Most people didn't know how to do it. By turning on the creator mode, you enable people to discover you allegedly a bit better, that not only people you're connected with, not only people you, you share, who've been to the same school, et cetera, a bit more traffic. And LinkedIn is gradually pushing the creator mode. My impression is that LinkedIn would like most users to become uh, to activate that creator mode, and they're, they've recently added a number of analytical tools to the uh, creator mode and all, all things that are no longer uh, um, available to the general public. And that, that is one way for LinkedIn to sweeten the, uh, uh, the pill and to make people decide that they want to um, uh, turn on the creator mode. The creator mode is great if you want to be perceived as a thought leader. And initially, at one point, LinkedIn only had, you know, there were maybe 500 uh, who's who, like the Bill Gates of the world that had, that mm -hmm. were, had a special influence, like in like LinkedIn logo and, and influentials. And now it's become a lot more plebeian or a lot more uh, grassroots than, uh, than that. You can simply uh -huh. uh, turn uh -huh. it on within a few seconds. It's worth trying and playing with. Excellent. Yeah, that that's exactly what I was doing. I it, it always recommended that I go to uh, creator mode, and I was like, ah, I don't know much about it. And I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and flip the switch and see how it works and learn more about, you know, if it helps me or ways that I can get in front of my ideal client. Um, I'm still too early in that process to to tell you yes or no, but it seems to be going well so far. So, yes. All right, Daniel, we are actually close to our 30 minute mark, uh, maybe a little bit over, which is fine. But is there anything, any last ideas or um, thoughts that you would want to leave our listeners with? Um, I'd like to show my screen and, and to suggest something for our audience here about the one way to, to use LinkedIn, even mm -hmm. if you're not in a B2B uh, service, if you like. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So Say, say I wanted to uh, uh, import uh, Zambu into another country. So I would go to the website and discover what they do. But actually what I would do next is simply find someone here on LinkedIn and then take the process here because it will be a lot faster and I'll get more information this way. Okay. And okay. if you think okay. about search, that search to find the, the founder of Zambu took me 30 seconds. Of course, if the if the company you know employed 10,000 of employees, it would have it would have taken me more time. But you don't have to work hard. You can work smart, and if you have a, a if you, your business is is uh, um, caring to consumers, but you also want to sell to, to offices, organizations, then on LinkedIn instead of targeting the individual users show how companies are using your products in a happy hour, in an event, in something that would make the HR manager you, you, you uh, mentioned say, hey, perhaps that is a good solution for us. And you can turn maybe something that, that, is, that only represents 10% of your business by highlighting that section on your LinkedIn activity, you can easily double that. And it's worth considering. Very nice. Well, the amount of tips you've left us with in just over 30 minutes, Daniel, has been very helpful for me. I can't imagine what our listeners are, are going to go through after they listen to this. So 
if if you're listening and you don't have an optimized profile after after this show, it's your own fault because we just gave you, you know, about 20 different things you can work on. And one thing that I want to mention to the listeners and viewers that has that Daniel has shared with you that has nothing to do with LinkedIn is researching his audience before he ever got on the show. So Daniel, this is something kudos to you for doing this, but I don't know if you recognize this for you listeners. He talked about Zambu, which is our sponsor. He brought up a few of our prior podcasts. He talked about the guy that mentioned MySpace being the, the, um, his network of choice. He, he knew who he was talking to before he ever started talking on the show. And I think this whole thing wraps around um, setting up your LinkedIn profile to attract your ideal client or the person that you're wanting to attract. And Daniel's ability to create this presentation and have and already know who he's talking to before the before he even presents it to us. Um, I think that was very cool, Daniel. And as a salesperson, um, that that really even more than the LinkedIn tips was what hit home with me. So I appreciate you doing that. And that's a good lesson for everybody listening as well. Wow, I'm I'm impressed. You've done the heavy lifting. All I had to do was really listen and, and enjoy the the show. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Daniel. Before we hop off of here, Daniel, where can people get a hold of you at? What's the best way to contact you? Thank you, Derek. The best way is to go to my website. That's danielalphon.com. Lots of content, a way to uh, book some time, and and that's the best resource uh, to start with. Excellent. So for all you listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on whatever platform you consume podcasts on, uh, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, we're on all of them. While you're there, leave us a review. It'd be grateful. We'd be grateful for that. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook and engage with our guests there as well. Until next time, Daniel, you have officially been civilized. Thanks for coming on the show. Anything less will be uncivilized. Thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-I-B-L podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.